is a bit of biology with Mr. Rock. And today we are going to be talking about enzymes. Okay, so for starters, we need to understand what a chemical reaction is before we actually start talking about enzymes. And for a lot of you, you don't know what chemical reactions are. So there's three things that you need to know. Number one, chemical reactions are any time molecules break or form chemical bonds. So that's the first thing that you need to know. With this, there are chemical reactions happening inside of you all the time, and you are a living organism, so that is why we are talking about it in biology, is because this happens all the time inside of you. An example of a chemical reaction would be cellular respiration. And it's how you take glucose and make it into cellular energy that we call ATP. So the first thing you need to know is what a chemical reaction is. The second thing you need to know is that every chemical reaction has reactants in products. Reactants are things that go into an equation. So things that go into a chemical reaction. And they go to the left of the arrow. So there's a little arrow here. The arrow indicates where the reactants are and where the products are. So in our example of cellular respiration, there are two reactants. One is glucose, the second is oxygen. Every reaction also has products. Products are the elements or the compounds that are produced by a chemical reaction. So in this example, there are three products. They're right here. So water, carbon dioxide, and ATP are all products of the cellular respiration chemical equation. So they are to the right of the arrow. The last thing you need to know about chemical reactions is that there's this thing called activation energy. Activation energy is the energy required to get a chemical reaction started. So every single chemical reaction needs energy to begin. So that's shown with this graph here. This is the energy that is needed. A catalyst is a molecule that speeds up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy. So it decreases the amount of energy needed to make a reaction go. So I'm going to use an analogy for this. You can think of somebody pushing a ball up a hill. The hill in this analogy is going to be the activation energy. So it's the energy barrier. And you look at that little guy and he's pushing the ball up the hill. And if it's a really, really big hill, then it's going to take a lot of time and it's going to take a lot of energy. But what catalysts do is they take the, the hill and they make it smaller so that it's easier to get up and over. When you get up and over the hill, that means the reaction has happened. So pushing this ball up the hill, catalysts lower the hill, they lower the activation energy, which makes it easier for reactions to occur. Okay, that was the intro to some chemistry. Now let's talk about biology. Enzymes then are going to be biological catalysts that speed up chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy. So what enzymes do is they take that energy that's required, the activation energy, and they bring it down so that it is easier to push the ball over the hill. So on the left would be a reaction with no enzyme. It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of time. And then on the right, we have a reaction with the enzyme, and it is less time and less energy. So an enzyme is a biological catalyst. A couple things you need to know about enzymes is that enzymes have a place called an active site. 
The active site is the place where the enzyme and a substrate meet. This is your first time seeing the word substrate, and the substrate is just the reactant. So it's what goes into the chemical reaction. And I'm going to give an example of this in a second. This means, so with the active site, enzymes are very, very specific because the active site is designed for the substrate. So this active site right here has a very unique shape and it is only going to work with this shape of the substrate. So it's kind of like this toy that you played with when you were younger, where you had to match the square with the square, the star with the star, and the triangle with the triangle. The triangle doesn't go into the square. So you got to put the specific shape, the triangle, with the triangle shape. And that's how enzymes work with substrates. So this is how enzymes actually work with the active site and the substrate. So if we wanted to talk about lactose, okay, so lactose is a molecule and we are going to break down lactose here. So the substrate is the reactant and that's what goes into the equation. So lactose is going to go in and there's an enzyme that breaks down lactose and it's called lactase. The enzyme in the substrate meets, and if you notice, they have a very specific shape. They have that very specific shape. So lactose molecule goes with the lactase enzyme. And when the reaction is done, because that's what enzymes do, they speed up chemical reactions. At the end of it, you have glucose and galactose. So enzymes, what they did here is they took the lactose molecule and they broke it down into smaller molecules so that we as humans can use them. This enzyme substrate relationship being specific is why a lot of biologists refer to enzymes and substrates as a lock and key model because keys are very specific for certain locks. So in this analogy, the enzyme acts as the lock. The substrate, which is the reactant, is going to act as the key. And when the lock meets the key, a reaction happens. And it's only going to happen when the specific lock meets the specific key. One of the last points that I need to talk about is there are some things that can affect enzyme activity. So the two main factors that can affect the enzyme's ability to speed up a chemical reaction are temperature and acidity, or pH. So temperature, if you have enzymes in a really hot condition or a really cold condition, it can speed up or slow down the enzyme. And then with pH, if you mess up an enzyme's pH too much, then you destroy the active site. And when you destroy the active site, think about it if you like melted off the lock. If you melted down the lock, the key is not going to be able to fit inside the lock. So with that, a pH too acidic or too basic can destroy an active site and that could get rid of or eliminate enzyme activity. There was a lot in this video. Uh, one thing that I just want to close and say with are these six points. So some of these you've heard, some of these are new. Number one, from the macromolecules video, I want you to remember that enzymes are proteins. So this is a new point that I'm making, but you did see this in your macromolecules video. Secondly, enzymes are biological catalysts that speed up chemical reactions. This is a new point too, but enzymes usually end with ACE. What that means is most proteins are called protease, lipase, lactase. 
So they usually end with that ASE ending. So that helps you to identify them in the future. Enzymes have an active site, and that is where the substrate meets the enzyme. Enzymes are specific, so that means that protease is going to break down proteins, lipase is going to break down lipids, lactase is going to break down lactose. So enzymes are specific to the substrate. And then finally, this is a new point too, enzymes are reusable. So when that lactase enzyme breaks down the lactose, it is going to go and find more lactose and it's going to continue to break it down. This has been a bit of biology with Mr. Rock. I'm signing off.